Good morning, children of God. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we praise your holy name. We thank you for you are God who never changes. We pray that this word which you've sown, that it may bear good fruit in our hearts, never to be stolen by the enemy, nor thrown away by us. Forgive us all our sins and iniquities and transgressions. And we pray that your spirit move through us in Jesus' name. Let it not be me, but you speaking through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Be glorified, O oh Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. So today we're going to be looking at the story of Jonah. And you can find this in the book of Jonah, chapter 1 through 4. So Jonah chapter 1 through chapter 4. So Jonah was um, a prophet of God and basically what happened was, um, and I call him a prophet of God because God actually used him to prophesy to a people. So it happened that during the time of Jonah, there was a city called Nineveh and Nineveh was a very large city at its time. And um, the people in Nineveh were involved in a lot of wickedness and a lot of wicked activities. And so God um, heard and saw how wicked the people were and decided to send Jonah to warn the people um, about their evil ways. So what winds up happening is that rather than Jonah obeying um, and going over to um, Nineveh, Jonah runs to um, a boat to ta to Tarshish. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Let me look at the name so I can make sure I get the name right. Yes, so he runs over to Tarshish instead. So he gets on a boat. Um, so, but Jonah arose to flee to Tashish from the presence of God. And while he was on the boat, um, the people in there, because he was the, in there with other um, mariners or other people um, who were also sailing the boat, um, God sent a wind, a very terrible wind. And um, the, the wind was so great. And so the people of the boat cast lots to try to figure out who is cussing all all this um, what is causing all this wind and it came they came to find out that it was Jonah that Jonah had disobeyed God and run away from God and that was the reason why there was so much um, um, the sea was being troubled and so um, they asked Jonah Jonah what can we do like why did you run away from God why did you run away from the presence of God and um, Jonah said okay in order for the sea to be calm you have to throw me into the sea and the boat will be calm and you guys will be saved but they didn't want to throw Jonah into the sea so they tried but unfortunately um, the waves did not calm down so they had to eventually throw jonah into the sea as jonah has suggested now god being god <laughs> so merciful even though jonah was thrown in the sea he prepared a fish to swallow jonah and jonah was alive in the fish believe it or not for three days i believe during that time period jonah had time to reflect and think about um what he did wrong the fact that he actually ran away from God and you know so Jonah had time to reflect and he did pray to God prayed to God um, and God had mercy on him and forgave him and so God then spoke again to Jonah and said listen you need to go to the Navy and warn the people that they've been wicked and so Jonah did that he walked around the now it was a three-day walk around the city of Nineveh because it was a very great city. So he went around and he told them that in 40 days, Nineveh shall crumble. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but basically Nineveh was going to be destroyed. And so the people of Nineveh heard this and they repented of their ways. They, um, the, the king declared a fast. They turned from their wicked ways. And so God had mercy on them. And when Jonah found out that God had mercy on them, Jonah was very upset. He was like, listen, this I knew you were a merciful God. I knew that you were going to have mercy on them. That is why I did not want to go. You know, that's why I ran away. And so Jonah in his anger, you know, kept walking. You know, remember it was a three-day walk. So in his journey, um, he he was sitting outside of the gate because he wanted to see what was going to happen to the city. I think Jonah was secretly hoping that these people would still perish, you know. But um, God then brought a plant to shield, a huge plant that shielded Jonah from the heat of the sun. Because I'm guessing the temperatures were really bad. 
And Jonah was very grateful for this plant. But then the very next day, God sent a worm to eat up the plant. And so Jonah was beaten by the elements of the, you know, the harsh weather. And he wished himself death because of just how bad the weather was. And so God then told him, see, you are angry that this plant died. And it's just a plant. It is just a plant. And you didn't even plant it. How much more should I not have mercy on those who are human beings and it's such a large city? Like, you know, and so basically the moral of the story is God is a merciful God. He wants us to turn away from our wicked ways. When you hear God say, hey, turn away from your wicked ways or this is going to happen to you. Remember, it's not God's plan for you to die. No way. All you got to do is turn away from whatever sin you're doing and he will have mercy on you. So always remember that if you ever come across a situation where you feel disciplined by God, remember that that is not your end. It's very important to remember that because the enemy sometimes uses that and tries to make you feel like that is the end. That is not your end. Discipline. When a, when a parent loves their child, they discipline their child. What you need to do is when you're disciplined, you need to turn, ask for forgiveness. And God is merciful. He will forgive you. So I want you to remember that today. God bless you. And I love you with the love of the Lord. I pray peace upon you today and throughout your week. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay blessed.